I have to say, this could not have gone better for Valve. The Legion Go S with Windows was launched a while back, and it was kind of universally panned. And then you fast forward about three months, and the same exact hardware with SteamOS is getting high praise. Now, I will say that I personally think that the hate that the Legion Go S with Windows was getting three months ago was a bit over the top, but the price to performance ratio wasn't great, but it also wasn't like the worst thing on the planet. I do think that a lot of people that use devices like the Steam Deck would be pretty disappointed picking up most Windows handhelds, Legion Go S included, if for no other reason than Windows is terrible on a tiny screen. And on top of that, Microsoft continually adds in features that nobody is asking for. No, I don't want Microsoft Office or Live 365 or whatever it is that's called. I'm not interested in OneDrive. No thanks, I don't want Copile. I don't, I don't want you to pre-install Candy Crush. Please stop putting news in the start menu. If I want the news, I will go and find it. What's that? Everything is working fine, and so you decide to auto-update Windows, and something that I need for that is essential to my workflow is suddenly broken? No, thank you. When, then you combine this with the fact that I constantly have to interact with Windows nonsense whenever I just want to play a game. And trust me, I know people have told me a million times, Bill, you can just turn off the Windows features that you don't like. Even a good friend of mine, the Fox, who has forgotten more this morning about how computers work than I will never know in my entire life, is like, just type in a command into the terminal and it'll extend your battery life on Windows. I get it, I do. But I shouldn't have to do any of that. The device should just handle that stuff for me. In my first video about the Legion Go S, I said that power was the least important thing to me when looking at devices like this. For me, what is most important is number one, convenience, or as I like to call it, time to game. How long does it take for me to, from picking up my controller until I am enjoying a game? As a very old man with grandkids, a full-time job, and a YouTube channel, time to game is extremely important. By default, SteamOS's Steam way of handling sleep and wake is so much better than Windows, it just makes time to game absolutely fantastic. Next up, I think would have to be ergonomics. How does the device feel in the hands? Do I get fatigued using it after a while? Do I have to really reach with my thumbs to get to certain things? And then there's the screen, and the screen has a lot of different options there. And then finally, power. So I decided to see how all of the different handheld PCs that I have stack up against each other. And how does Windows stack up against Linux installed across multiple devices? I'm testing the Steam Deck, the Lenovo Legion Go, the ROG Ally X, the Lenovo Legion Go S with the Z1e chipset, as well as the Z2 Go chipset. I also want to test how Windows is running on these devices versus Linux. On the Legion Go S, I've got the Windows version as well as two SteamOS versions. For my ROG Ally X, I already had Bazite installed, so I'm going to use that as my SteamOS stand-in there. I figure the performance is going to be fairly close between those two. But I also had the 2280 drive that came with it, so I reinstalled Windows on that drive so that I could get Windows benchmarks for that device. That way we can compare between the two. On the original Legion Go, I'm just going to test Windows because I don't want this video to be forever. But I am not usually the benchmark guy. I usually focus way more on how the average user will experience using a device. But I was very interested in seeing how the same hardware would compare between Linux and Windows. So for the benchmarks that I'm going to show you, I decided to choose games that have built-in benchmarks. That way, I can get very reliable results since benchmarks do the same thing every single time, which is unlike if I'm running a benchmark while I play, because as hard as I might try to, you know, have real gameplay, I might not do everything the exact same way every time, and that would be a problem. I selected these games, Cyberpunk 2077, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Borderlands 3, and Animal Well, specifically for low TDB battery testing. I've set the games to run at 800p when possible, and when I couldn't set 800p, I used 720p instead. And then I use the medium preset with all upscaling and frame generation turned off. These aren't the settings that'll get you the best frame rates on these devices, but it is consistent across the board. So let's jump into the benchmarks. And at the end, I wanna talk about who I think each device and operating system is for, starting with Cyberpunk 2077. 800p Steam Deck preset with frame gen and upscaling turned off, 
This is showing us average frames. I did two runs and then averaged them each time, though the results were really consistent each time, so that probably wasn't needed. You can see here that the OLED Steam Deck performed worse than everything else, which isn't a huge surprise. Valve's Van Gogh chipset is very efficient, but it's not super powerful. It's also the oldest device that I'm testing. I was going to also test out the LCD Steam Deck, but I haven't turned it on since the OLED Deck came out and it wouldn't turn on. I think I may have killed the battery completely. What completely surprised me here, and I might have done something wrong, but I tested it over and over and I got very consistent results. The Legion Go S with twice the RAM of the Steam Deck was less than one frame per second faster than the Steam Deck. The rest of the devices show that the Z1e chipset outperforms the Z2 Go chipset, which in turn outperforms the Van Gogh chipset. Not a huge surprise here. We'll see if this holds up through the other games as well. Other surprises here is that the Legion Go S with 16 gigs of RAM and running SteamOS was outperforming the ROG Ally X with 24 gigs of RAM running Bazite. One thing to keep in mind when looking at this data is that in Windows, when you plug in your ASUS ROG Ally X, it automatically boosts up to 30 watt TDP in turbo mode, which I did for all of my tests. I ended up trying Cyberpunk again on the ROG Ally X, this time unplugged just to see how different it would be on 25 watts instead of on 30. And I got about two frames lower, which is you know within the margin of error anyway. The best performance came from the Legion Go S with the Z1 Extreme chipset and 32 gigs of RAM. But Windows was the big loser here. For the Legion Go S, Windows performance was absolutely abysmal. Moving on to Borderlands 3, this time Windows wins out, specifically on the ROG Ally X and that 30 watt TDP boost into turbo mode, which kicked it all the way up to nearly 80 frames per second. For some reason, the Ally X with Bazite came in quite a bit below Windows at 68 frames per second, but the Legion Go S with the same chipset and more RAM came in second with 78 frames per second which is pretty damn close. The Steam Deck comes in last, but not by much because the Legion Go S Z2 Go version with Windows performs about the same as the deck. This really shows how poorly the Legion Go S performs on Windows and how much of a boost you get by switching over to SteamOS. Next up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I was told by people in my last video that I should be running the Windows version through Proton. I tried that and I actually got worse results. So I'm running native Linux versus native Windows versions here. With the exception of the Steam Deck, which is the oldest hardware that I'm testing, SteamOS and Bazite are performing better than Windows across the board here. What I found really surprising was how poorly the Ally X handled this particular game compared to the other Linux versions, especially with the 30 watt TDP boost. But the setback was only temporary as now we move on to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. 800p medium preset, Windows loses out yet again, except on the Ally X, which boosts up to 72 frames per second with Bazite just a smidge behind. This time the Steam Deck even beat out the Windows powered Z2 Go Legion Go S but it's only by one frame per second, which is, as I said before, is within the margin of error here. After that, I decided to test out battery drain. On these graphs, shorter bars are actually better. For each system, I launched Cyberpunk 2077 using the same settings as I did in the benchmark, but this time I unplugged it and then I set it to drain for 10 minutes. Then I extrapolated out how much percentage I would lose after playing for an hour, and here are the results. Remember that on this graph, shorter bars are better. And as you can see, the yellow bars, which represent windows, are the longest bars. SteamOS and Bazite went out yet again with the three shortest bars belonging to those operating systems. I expected the ROG Ally X to leave everything in the dust thanks to its 80 watt hour battery, but the Steam Deck OLED with the Van Gogh chipset and a 50 watt hour battery came out on top. The worst result was the Z2 Go Legion Go S with Windows. Next, I did the same test using Animal Well, but I limited the TDP as much as I could in order to maintain 60 frames per second. Now, while the test was running, the game would dip down to about 58 frames per second every once in a while, but it was close enough to 60 that I didn't want to bump the TDP up any higher as I wanted to see how much I could really lose on low power game over an hour. Here's the results. Again, shorter bars are better here. 
Steam Deck and Legion Go, as with Steam OS and Z2 Go performed the best here. The worst performing was the Z2 Go Legion Go S with Windows, and it wasn't even close with a 36% drain over one hour using Animal Well. It is shocking to me that the same device on Windows performed so much worse than Steam OS, which came in second. This is the same hardware, same everything, just a different operating system. It's crazy. Okay, benchmarks out of the way. Let's talk about who each of these devices is actually for. I will say that I'm leaving price out of this because prices might change by the time you see this or something might end up being on sale. And on top of that, everyone has their own price resistances. That said, I would say get the Steam Deck if you wanna save money because you can get the LCD one really, really cheap. But those savings disappear fairly quickly when you switch from LCD to OLED. So we're gonna leave the LCD out there. Just keep in mind, it's an option and the performance should be pretty close to the OLED anyway. If you're looking to play games that are not available on SteamOS, either because of anti-cheat or DRM or whatever other reason there might be, I think right now the best device that you can get just in terms of performance is probably the Ally X. It has a huge 80 watt hour battery and the performance is pretty good, especially if you're not too far from an outlet. But the screen is smaller than the Legion Go S and man, that big roomy screen on the Legion Go S is appealing. The disadvantage for the Legion Go S is that this scenario is it's a much smaller battery despite being a much larger device. When it comes to ergonomics, I would also say that all of these devices are pretty comfortable with the original Legion Go being the least comfortable. But if I didn't have other things to compare it to, I would have no complaints about how it feels in the hand. That said, in just about every other category other than screen size, it's dead last. Though there is something to be said for the detachable controls, so take that for what you will. If you are all in on Linux, then I would say it comes down to the Legion Go S or the Steam Deck at this point. And I would say get the Steam Deck if you want any of the following things. OLED screen, trackpads, smaller form factor. If, in, on the other hand, you want a bigger screen with variable refresh rate that is pretty clutch on low power devices like these, then I think the Legion Go S Z1 Extreme chip running SteamOS might be the way to go. At this point, I would have a hard time recommending the original Legion Go over anything on this list. As for the two versions of the Legion Go S, it all depends on what games you're playing. If you're playing a lot of indie games, go with the Z2 Go. The chip is more efficient and it's cheaper, but if you wanna play more power hungry games, then the Z1e is probably what you wanna pick up. That said, Lenovo also has the Legion Go 2 coming out later on this year, I think, and that's gonna have the Z2 Extreme chipset, which we have yet to see performance metrics on. When that comes out, I'll be doing a review, so subscribe for that. I also think Asus has some announcements coming up pretty soon if the rumors that I'm hearing are to be believed. Anyway, which device do you think is the right choice and why? Let me know in the comments section down below that like button. And from the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Stay rad and thanks for watching.